All this is Dr. Mobin Sayed. Welcome to one more show. I hope you had a great weekend. Let's start our discussion. Today is a very interesting study. It's a study from Harvard Medical College and University, plus it's a university from Taiwan. It is a combination of their teams that did the study in healthcare workers in Massachusetts. Beautiful study. What is interesting, what is stunning for me to see in that is that the healthcare workers who were previously infected during the observation time of the study, they did not develop any infection. Then they got vaccinated as well as I think there are mandates for that. And they still did not have any infection. Not that vaccine was then needed to get the uh, infection, but they were continuing to be observed. While other folks who were vaccinated were getting infected. So that is a very, very interesting thing. So the authors say that we are proving or demonstrating a robustness of the naturally acquired immunity. And again, this does not mean that we should go out and start getting naturally acquired immunity because the infection itself can be deadly. However, those who have become infected and recovered, this is a very important news. And I still do not understand why our healthcare authorities do not take this into account that somebody who was previously infected and has recovered. So let's start a discussion, beautiful study. Let's look at it. So here is the study. All of these links are going to be in the description as well. I have this PDF open. Here are the links and references. This is drbean.com. This is the study. It is a preprint, continued continued effectiveness of COVID-19 vaccination among urban healthcare workers during Delta variant predominance. So this is the study, we'll discuss this. This is their PDF, I have the link to this as well. Then during this discussion, you would see that they talk about person days or person, uh, can be person years and others, they have used person days. So if you wanted to study more that what does it mean to say person days, and uh, how do we uh, calculate that and how does it contribute? You can read these articles over here. Generally, the basic idea is, imagine if there are 10 people who are part of some observation and they are, they are being observed. So they are contributing their time for being observed. And there is some mechanism, some objective that we want. For example, let's say we are looking for them to get infected. So, out of those 10 people every day that they are not infected, but they are at risk, for example, the 10 collectively have contributed 10 percent days. Another day, another 10 percent days. Then imagine if one person becomes infected, that person will be removed. Their total number of days they have contributed so far will be used, but no, no further because the objective for the study's observation met. And then others would continue to provide the person days of the data. So then we would we would talk about it by saying this particular disease incidence or the rate of occurrence of that in a duration in a in a window of time was following in this many person days. So that's what we're going to talk about. But it's not a big deal. Just see that they look at the comparison of the incidence rate. Forget about the person days itself. Okay, so. Let's start with my illustrations. So here is the painting I did over this weekend. The painting's title is Lion's Mane. And now let's continue with our discussion further. This is Gifts for Humanity and here is the study. This is the study PDF. So if you see here, Occupational Medicine Cambridge Health Alliance, Harvard Medical School, Cambridge, Department of Environmental Health, Harvard University, T.H. Chan School of Public Health, Boston, uh, National, then this is National Chang Kung University Hospital College of Medicine, National Chang Kung University, Tien, Tainan, Taiwan. So these are the, here are the authors from these universities. This is the discussion that we are going to have. So I'm going to show you this study through my illustrations. So what we'll do is this, first we'll go over the study summary 
And then if you just wanted to hit the summary, you can then um, stop there. I would go over some of the details as well. So here is the study's properties. Number one, it is still a preprint. So it's not a published peer reviewed studies. Study, I think it would pass. So this is a preprint. Number two, this study was done in two windows of times. One window of time was from December 16th, 2020 till September 30th, 2021. So a large window of time. During this bigger window, there were multiple variants. Remember, there was UK variant and South African variant, and then there was Delta and so on. Then the authors also processed the data from July 1st till September 30th. That was the time of predominance of Delta variant. So they kind of calculated data for both to see vaccine efficacy. They were actually set out to figure out what is the vaccine efficacy over multiple months when we compare healthcare workers who were vaccinated versus unvaccinated. In this whole discussion, they actually, or observation, they actually also found out that those who were previously infected did not develop any infection. That doesn't mean that nobody who's infected would never develop an infection, but this is a very interesting observation of the robustness of the naturally acquired immunity. Okay, continuing. This study was done in Massachusetts, healthcare workers. Luffy is here. Luffy. What happened? 45% of the Luffy is singing the songs of his people. So 45% are non-white. Let me, if you give me one second, I'm going to open the door for him. So he came in the door and he closed the door. Okay, back here. So study was done in Massachusetts. Healthcare worker were observed in this one. This was a healthcare facility in which they did the study. 45% were non-white, which included African-Americans, Hispanics, and Asians. They were all healthcare workers. The total number was 4,615, and they all together, from December 2020 to September 2021, they collectively contributed 1,152,486 risk-free person days. Not risk-free, at-risk person days. So this is the number of person days that were observed. So that is the quality of the study. Now results, after these three slides of results, the summary is done. And, and keep an eye on it. The vaccinated versus unvaccinated is different. Look at the third slide, which would have the previously infected as well. So here, the part A of the results. This is the study duration all, all the whole window, that is December to September. What they saw was those healthcare workers that were not vaccinated, in them, the incidence rate or incidence of COVID-19 was 5.2 per 10,000 person days. 5.2 per 10,000 person days was the incidence in unvaccinated. Or 114 incidents or cases over 219,812 person days. Generally, just let's just summarize it this much, 5.2 per 10,000 person days. That is sufficient to keep in mind. The vaccinated individuals, healthcare workers, contributed or had 0 0.6, 0 0.6 cases per 10,000 Percent days. So the incidence was really low. Compare this 5.2 versus 0 0.6. So very low. So the first outcome or observation was that in vaccinated individuals, the incidence was 
very low. The efficacy because of this was 82.3%. Now keep in mind, this is the whole duration of the, of the study. So that is December to September. That includes multiple variants. Then what they did was, they took the data for the time when Delta was predominant. And so they, they processed the data from July 1st, 2021, September 30, 2021, Delta predominance. And here what they found was 5.8 per 10,000 person days was the incidence. 5.8 cases per 10,000 person days in unvaccinated healthcare workers. 1.3, this is increased, 1.3 per 10,000 person days. Remember, with all the variants, it was 0 0.6, so more than doubled. 1.3 per 10,000. So the vaccine efficacy was 76.5%. And the confidence interval is 40.9%. That is a lower range to 90.6%. That is the upper range. So that 95% confidence of this, this range. So that is also very interesting. But here is the big one. This is the big one. This is what actually made me take a pause and appreciate what they observed. Out of all the people, 4,000 some, 423 were previously infected. And when the vaccine mandates were given, they were healthcare workers, so there was a vaccine mandate. So these folks who were previously infected were then later on vaccinated as well. So the researchers observed them before the vaccine and after the vaccine. Now, please remember, these are previously infected. I got infected and I recovered. And now they're observing me that am I going to have an infection or not? Or so reinfection. And then I got vaccinated as well. And they are observing me still to see would I get infection or not. So here is what, ha what happened. 423 people were observed from the 10th day of their infection, COVID recovery, 10th day, not, not recovery, from the infection, 10th day from the infection. And they had zero cases and 74,557 person days were observed. If you can see here, I made this little coronavirus under his feet. And then, second part, these folks then became vaccinated as well. And so they continue to observe them after the vaccination too. And look at this, zero breakthrough cases. Zero breakthrough cases compared to other folks who were vaccinated and they had the breakthrough cases. Here, zero breakthrough cases. These are the folks who were previously infected, then they were also vaccinated. They didn't have cases before, they didn't have cases after. This was not the case in, the, in these two results. Here is vaccinated folks, vaccinated only folks, and they had breakthrough infections. Here is unvaccinated folks who got infected. But here, this is very interesting. All right, I'm going to continue. Now, this is it. That is a summary of the of this topic. We are 15 minutes in it. If you just wanted to finish here, this is a summary. We are done. Now, I'm going to go into some of the details of the of the uh, the study. Number one, the researchers were trying to figure out what drives infection rate. Is infection rate only controlled? This was in their mind, and I'm I'm adding words to them. Is it is the infection rate only controlled by, let's say, vaccine or not vaccine? So they added a third variable. How about previously infected? Does that affect the infection rate? And they saw yes. I would say mask, yes or no. Social distancing, yes or no. Hygiene, yes or no. Kind of work environment, yes or no. Exposure, yes or no. 
risk factors, yes or no, there are so many variables to be looked at to understand who will stay protected or not. But they looked at three instead of two. They said we wanted to see is there something more than just the vaccine that can change the infection rate? And of course, they found previously infected. The second thing is they thought that the vaccine efficacy data in healthcare working settings was less available. So they wanted to do a study to see what that data may look like. And what their objective was, they were going to observe healthcare workers until the healthcare workers either develop an infection or the study's duration is over. Normally, there is a third exit point as well, and that is if somebody dies or leaves or loss to, um, to the follow-up. Anyways, this is what they were trying to observe. The vaccines that they observed were Pfizer that had been given since December 16th of 2020 to the individuals in this study. Moderna started on December 23rd, so some of them got Moderna. J&J, &J, I should have said J&J &J instead of J&N, since Feb 2020. There was one person with the mixture as well. He had Johnson & Johnson first one dose, and then they got, I believe, Moderna. Now, they said that we didn't have sufficient data size to calculate vaccine efficacy throughout this time for individual vaccines and compare them to the not vaccinated. So this was a pooled vaccine result. And they called a case that was PCR positive and was verified by the Massachusetts Health Department or the appropriate agencies. So that is one. Then, as we saw before, the number of healthcare workers were 4,615. Their age was 45, me median age, plus minus 13.3 years. So 58 and, and 32. 76% were females, 45% were non-white. In them, 20% were African-American, 13, so uh, this 45% breakdown, 13.5% were Hispanic, 9% were Asians. Vaccine detail. By the end of the study, so of course, when the study started, December 2020, very few people were vaccinated. And then as the study continued to go, and then the mandate came in as well for healthcare worker, more and more people got vaccinated. So by the end of this study, September 2021, 95.7% of the individuals in this study were at least one dose vaccinated. The vaccines breakdown was 58.3% had received Moderna, 39.4% Pfizer, 2.3% Johnson & Johnson, and 0.02% or one person had mixture of Johnson & Johnson and Moderna. So this is the study. This is the second part. The detail is done as well. So now I'm going to do the third part, and that is just very quickly go over the document itself. My takeaway, previous infection is a robust factor in helping people. Having said that, please, my, none of my discussions ever suggest anyone to go get infected. That is, it, there is a deadly outcome possible. And so don't look for the infection. This is what they observed in the people who unknowingly became infected. Okay, so here. This is a study, so I went over the first part. So here, this is their summary of it. I would request you to read it. Of course, I summarize in the illustrations, but there is a large number of pages and text. So the study period is here, and then the incidences that we discussed, they are there. Look at this. Independently, we found no reinfection 
among those with prior COVID-19 contributing to 74,557 reinfection free person days, adding to the evidence base for the robustness of naturally acquired immunity. This is one. Then if I go to their discussion and ne near the end of it, you would see once again, check this out. When we examined healthcare workers number 423 with infections occurring before vaccination before so this is the folks who had the infection before the vaccination was done no reinfection was observed accumulating 74557 reinfection free person days starting 10 days after initial infection and censoring at the date of receiving the first vaccine dose. So that is where they would stop and now they would consider them to be vaccinated. Further, after vaccination, previously infected healthcare workers did not contribute any breakthrough infection events among the vaccinated healthcare workers. Now I want to share one more thing, one final comment and then we stop for today for this discussion. I had the same comment I made with the Kentucky study as well, which made many people very angry with me and that the result of those angers are still, I'm, I'm going through lots of things. But I want to make this comment here as well. A person who gets infected in December, develops antibodies, would have their immune system ramped up for five, six months. So this, this study goes from December till September. So let's say December till May, June is six months. Immune system is ramped up. And because they were healthcare workers, they had to get the vaccine as well. Somewhere in there, they got the vaccine as well. That means their immune system ramped up again. So it actually makes sense that these healthcare workers who were previously infected and then also got vaccinated, they just kept having their immune system ready and running. And because of that, they were able to handle the reinfection better. Maybe they even actually got exposed, but they didn't even know that their active immune system just took care of the infection or reinfection. They didn't even know. Maybe they didn't, because they didn't develop any symptoms, they didn't get any PCRs. I don't think that they were doing a PCR on a weekly basis or monthly basis. So that is an interesting observation. Now, those folks who got vaccinated, Again, the time window is still the same. December till September is not a very large time window. Depending upon when somebody was vaccinated, at least four, five, six months after that, they would have proper antibodies, ramped up immune system, and they would be attacking the pathogen much better. The folks who were not vaccinated at all, they were just kind of exposed and open to it. Now, I wanted to make sure that I clarify one more thing. Instead of saying unvaccinated or anti-vaxxers, they are all different things and anti-vaxxer is used as derogatory term. I started using the term uh, SARS-CoV-2 naive or spike protein naive. Somebody made a very angry comment that you are calling us naive who did not get the vaccine and uh, that itself is just an <laughs> insult to us. So that was not meant to be an insult. Actually, that was out of respect that your immune system is not aware of the virus itself. And that in technical terms is called, let's say SARS-CoV-2 naive. Any infection that you have never gotten, your immune system is naive about that. And it's actually a, a more respectful term than to say unvaccinated or anti-vaxxer. So with this, I'm going to stop here. Thank you very much for listening. Please do me a favor. Please like, subscribe, and share. This is definitely a stunning uh, study. I wish this study is sent to folks in CDC and FDA and other countries' healthcare ministers as well or ministries as well so that they can figure out that, hey, there is a benefit in accepting the protection that people have after getting naturally after getting after acquiring immunity from the natural infection 
So with this, thank you very much. And uh, do me a favor, if you would like to support this work, there are links in the description. You can buy me a coffee, you can use PayPal to support it, or you can become a patron as well. So thank you very much. And I would join again in a few minutes and we'll do some chit chat.